Hello everyone and welcome back. I believe this is episode 12. Um, I decided um, to make an episode about something I was thinking about. Um, I haven't really done much programming in my calculator since the last time I was working on an episode. Um, although I did make this program called a test that was helping me with um, um, I forgot what these numbers were. Anyway, it was helping me with my homework. Um, it was plotting basically rotations, reflections, and projections uh, onto the screen or onto the plotting map. Um, what was B, W, and R? I have to remember what those were. So B, I think... Oh, B was how many points I wanted to plot. Uh, w was the range in which the points would be selected, so I could select 10 to kind of cover like a big area. And R, I can't remember what R was. I think it was something new I was trying to add. Yeah, so R, R was trying, R was something I was trying to make it so you could decide whether it was random or not. You know what? I think it's. I think matrix A has to be a 2x2. Two two. And then, for example, you could put like 0, 1, 1, 0 for matrix A. Um, I think that's how it was. And then when you run tests, you could pick something like, well, we'll say 5 points in a range of like 10. Uh oh. And matrix B, oh, that one also has to be a 2 by 2 That's right. As you can see, it's not like an elegant program. The, it's only designed, it was only to help me understand my homework. So there we, we see that's a, a, um, a reflection across the xy axis. Uh, but if I take a matrix A and I edit it a little bit, and I, instead of putting that matrix and I put halves uh, what this does is we're multiplying the same matrix by or a different matrix but we're multiplying it the same way we're just changing the matrix and the effect is now it's a projection onto the xy axis <coughs> so yeah, I was just having some fun with that. These points, I purposely wanted there to just be one point on one end, but not on the other. That way you could see which way it's pointing. So I had to actually plot lines separately uh, than the, the plot points. But anyway, uh, that's enough talk about that. What I wanted to do for this episode, um, I wanted to, I wanted to work on lights out. Uh, I was playing around with it, and it, it's... I'm not good at it. I'm not good at beating this game. Um, so, I have this idea. Uh, and my idea is... Um, basically, um, I want to make this so that... There's a way to see the solution. I want to be able to see what are the next ones I have to press uh, in order to to beat it, or what what's like a hint or something like that. So what I'm thinking is either I can create a whole new matrix, or I can take the matrix that I have, and instead of just setting one and zero for it, um, I might be able to set more values to store not only whether the light's on, but whether it's in um, another state, which I'm gonna I'm gonna require for it, and that state is gonna be basically the toggle state of whether how, whether it's been actually toggled directly since uh, the solution. Which means since the original matrix was all zeros. So, yeah, it's kind of, 
it's it's kind of um, it's going to be interesting because basically I'll be able to see the solution but I don't know if it'll be the optimal solution or it might be the only solution uh, and the reason why I think it'll be well for one is for one thing I have to explain um, the reason why I think you can have the solution in the first place is um, let's run the, the game lights out first of all I, I'm pretty sure that you can have a solution so let's mix it by like five okay so it just mix like five so what my thinking is it doesn't matter if I hit this and then this I don't have to do it backwards to get those same ones back off. I can start here and then go here and it's the same exact result. So it doesn't matter which order you hit them in, if, as long as you toggle everything back to how it was, uh, no matter what order you do it in, you'll everything's done by toggles anyway. So nothing really like builds on a pattern. There's, there's no way to change anything based off it doesn't matter if I hit that if I hit this and then turn this one back those three ones around it it doesn't matter when I toggled this one those were still toggled the same number of times no matter what anyway so basically the solution should always be seen as just certain ones that I only have to toggle once in order to solve the puzzle so that's that's um, that's the way I want to do it. Uh, I just want to show which ones are next. And so in order to do that, um, we have a one and a zero state for the, for the matrix. But I want to, I want to set, basically I want to set basically 0 through 4 states um, because um, <coughs> that way I have a state for whether the lights on and I also have a state for whether it's been toggled because the light could be on or off and even if it's either on or off, it could also be in a state of toggled for the solution or not toggled for the solution because, you know, the ones next to it also affect it too. So it kind of leaves all four possibilities. So, yeah, that's my goal here. I want to see where I store things into, into the matrix, though. So I'd not a store as uh, X, Y, B. What I could do is I could use another matrix. I could use like matrix B to do the same thing. Um, which might, <laughs> it might make things look a little simpler. Um, in fact, it might be easier on the logic. So... I might actually just go ahead and do that just to because it, it's probably simpler. It, I know it uses more memory and everything, but um, oh, why not? It's not a big deal. It's it'll make things easier to understand, I suppose. Uh, but it would definitely be possible with just one matrix. So there's no. There's not too much reason to do it this way. There's just, just, just for the looks and to make it, you know, easier to see what's going on. So, so instead of, so I'm going to use B. So zero is going to be it hasn't been toggled, and one means it has, and it'll set back to zero if you toggle it again, uh, but only if you toggle it directly. So, so yeah, here's where we output zeros to begin. Um, so here's where we toggle, uh, oh yeah, if we have this loop right here to go to A1. So we have to go down here to label A, which is here. 
So here's where we do the knot of the xy coordinates. Um, and then we also have the ones next to it. So x minus 1, x plus 1, all that jazz. Now we don't have to worry about those. The only one we have to toggle for b is this one up here. So um, and we don't really have to worry about storing it into any extra variables or anything like that. So up here I'm going to take not, um, let's see here, not matrix B, uh, Y, X, and then I'm going to store that into matrix B, uh, Y, X. Okay, so now we'll have a solution matrix. This will tell us everything. This will tell us every solution. So now all we have to do is we add, have to add a button that shows us, it kind of prints out on the screen where everything is. And that's what I want to add. So here we have the controls. Um, and I want to make the button, I, I'm going to do it the alpha button. So it's the green button. So it's going to be, the value is going to be 31. So here we uh, have if a equals 21, then, and then we have all of the, this stuff. So in front of this, we can do uh, another loop or another if statement. So if a equals 31, then, and it's just going to be a simple output of um, just two loops um, inside of each other. Um, so I don't remember which variables are free to use. Um, S and T are not. Uh, a and B are not. A is not, at least. Let's see here. X. Yeah, so... We'll use just E and F, I guess. Just to be safe. Um, I'm hoping this won't ruin anything. Um... So the size, I believe it was eight wide and four tall. So we're gonna go from one to eight, and one to four. And then we're just gonna, we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna say if matrix B, Y, X, equals, well, just if matrix B, Y, X, then we're going to output, and I can't remember what it was. Um, let's go back to the top to look at the, okay, so Y2 minus 1 x2 and then y2 x2 minus 1 so uh, we might be able to get away with y2 x2 I believe yeah so or we might subtract one from both I don't know if I want to output it on top of the existing ones or zeros, or if I want to put it in the corner or what. Um, but yeah, we can.
we'll just do y2, x2, and then we'll put a, uh, we'll put a colon, we'll just try that out. Okay, so lights out, let's try this. So we're gonna mix it by five. Here's our five, I press the alpha button, and it didn't seem like anything happened. Uh, not sure why. Well, we'll display. We'll display hello just to, just to make sure we we know that we pressed it. Okay, so good. It did press it. Oh, and look, there's a colon there. <laughs> um. I don't know why it only appeared there though. That's interesting. Let me zoom up. I know it's probably out a little bit. I want to make it easy to see what's going on. So, yeah, something's not right. If only one got outputted. Uh, let me look at matrix B really quick. Okay. Um, there's definitely five ones. Oh, that's why. B Y X. <laughs> Derpity derp. Okay, now let's try it. Okay, so I'm going to do five. Okay, now I'm going to press alpha. Oh, so I can see which ones I need to change. Uh, so this is one right here. Uh, this is another. Uh, this is another. This is another. This is another. And I win. Okay, so I can go to this. Um, hmm. Yeah, you know what? Let's make the solution appear or disappear. So let's like toggle it basically. Um, yeah, let's let's toggle the solution on and off. So let's have S as our toggle. No, not S. S is being used. Uh, so something needs to be our solution toggle. So let's use C. So C no C's used. What about D? Is that used? No, nope, it's used. E, F, G. Let's say G is our solution toggle. Um, so if this and G, then we output that. Uh, But we're going to have an else. Okay. Okay. So, oops. I'm going to put a sp Oopsies. I'm going to put a space here. Okay, so... 
so G is going to be toggled. Um, so the first time we press it, we're going to st we're going to store not of G into G. And now when we run the program, we can turn the solution on and off. So I can press alpha and it'll turn on. Okay, so I can see which ones to press. And let's say I don't want help anymore. I can have them erased. So now I can just kind of like, oh, okay, well, I'll try to finish this. Oh, I don't know which one to press. Okay, those two. And I'll turn them off. Okay. The only problem is... So... When I go here and I hit this and I hit this and I hit this, I have to turn the solution off then on again. But I don't want to have to do that. I want the solution to update automatically as I press anything. Um, so when I go down, um, I'll put F2E2. So I'm going to come down here and I am going to output here. If G, then I'm going to output this. So, oops. So if G, then I'm going to output, uh, well, if, if G and matrix B, uh, Y, X, um, Well, you know what? Okay. If if G then. Okay, so we're only going to go into this entire loop when our out when our solution mode is on. But we're going to have oops, we're going to have two options in here. So, we're going to have if B, Y, X, and then uh, and then not B, Y, X. Okay, so if G is on, if our solution is on, then we'll go into this, this, uh, I don't know if I called it a loop, but this if statement. So it's going to hit this branch, and then it'll check to see if it's on or not and whether it's on or not it'll output a space or not so we'll output um, either a space or not a space so uh, 2y and 2x um, we'll put a space and then y2 x2 and then a colon. Okay, so now when we run this, and let's say we do five or whatever, okay, we mix it up. Okay, I want to see the solutions. Okay, now when I hit this, it should turn on. Good. When I hit it again, it should turn off. So if I hit this, off, off. So basically, it's just showing me how to solve the problem, but I can turn those off if I want. So there, I hit, off, I hit the green button, they're all off. Now when I go around and hit anything, I don't see anything, but when I hit alpha again, bam, the, it turns on and it shows me exactly how to solve it. So now whenever I get stuck and I'm like, okay, how would I actually solve this? I can hit the green button and now I know. Okay, so now let's try it really hard. Let's try, uh, actually let's try 25 mixed. So 25 mixes, I'm going to try to solve this and then when I fail, which I probably will, uh, I can see exactly how to solve it because it'll show me all the solutions. Oh, I actually got that side. I'm surprised. Uh, usually I have no idea how to even do that in the first place, but apparently I figured that one out. Um, but here's where I get completely amazed at the fact that there's like just a couple numbers left. I have no idea what to do. I have no idea how to get these it's like some genius would know how to how to do this. I made this program doesn't mean I know how to to beat it. Uh, somehow, some way. Um, so I don't know how to get these two last ones. 
somehow I have to do it on the edge or something, so I'm going to hit the solution. Whoa. Is that what it takes? That's a lot. Okay, that, that like amazes me. That's really hard, so I have to go and toggle all of these. And apparently that's what it would have taken to, uh, to get all the lights out. That is pretty intense. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. It's, it was enjoyable for me to do that. The reason why I did that is just because I was playing the game, honestly. Um, I wanted to just be able to beat it, and it was just... It started getting annoying. I was just playing it just for no, almost no reason, just for fun. And it just kind of, the idea came to me and I almost programmed it myself. And then I realized, you know what? I could just do, you know, just a quick episode on it. So uh, that's what I did. I just did a quick episode on it. And uh, really, it was uh, actually pretty cool. I'm glad I got that done. Um, I should add in you know another button to mix it up again so I don't have to like turn you know start over the program but you know it's not a big deal you can just start it over so it's not it's not too big of a deal but it is uh, nice to be able to see the solution set and to be able to turn it off and on and and things like that so yeah this is one this is one lovely thing about programming is you can you can always, you have so much control as the programmer. You can make a, a, just about anything you could imagine. Um, anything you think is that would computationally be possible. Uh, you just got to get the right amount of memory and, and things like that. So, you like the harder it is to learn how to program certain things, such as like functional programming languages. Uh, the better off they are in the long run. I have to say that. So this is a very easy language to learn. Some languages are very, um, uh, their, their grammar, um, is extremely, it has the ability to be recursive and to return functions <coughs> within the actual grammar of the language. Um, but but programming something like that is actually very um, bug free. It it does not fail. Something what I've been programming these simple programs are very simple. Uh, they're easy to make sure that they're elegant. But sometimes programs can get more complicated when you have complex data structures that uh, manage really fast algorithms and really strong algorithms that use like hash tables and things like that and those can eventually get pretty complicated um, so yeah programming can can go really far and and there's a lot of um, a lot of times people get in into traps of thinking that you know not understanding what they're learning or thinking that what they're learning might not be useful but it ends up sometimes those things are the most useful of all so um, yeah it's very um, computer science is really really interesting field it's it's very um, it's it's unlike any any field it has its own uh, theory behind it its own set of mathematics so it's a very interesting uh, a field. But yeah, programming this was very fun. Um, let me know what you think I should program. I want uh, feedback. If you're interested, you like watching my videos, give me some feedback. Uh, give me something that you want to see. That way I don't have to keep coming up with ideas forever and ever. And I know that someone's out there who's actually interested enough and wants to learn from it and I can give them what they want so let me know you know if it, it's too hard I'll let you know maybe I'll try to uh, use a computer or something instead if, if need be we'll see 
uh, but yeah, shoot me questions, let me know, um, and I'll try to, to respond. Thank you, and uh, have a nice day.